everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day, whoop whoop. Happy Wednesday to each of you. Yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room. So what are we doing today? This is what we're doing today. We are making ourselves a sewing machine dust cover, sewing machine cover to keep the dust off. To be honest, for me, it's about being pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to give you a heads up on a couple of things. A lot of you have told me that you enjoy quilt as you go. So this method is done as quilt as you go. Now it's really hard for me to tell you how much fabric you need because number one, the idea is to use something in your sewing room, okay? that you already have, that you have plenty of. And you will be cutting strips, but the amount of strips will depend on the size of your machine and every machine is different and if you're going to add an extension table you'll need more if you're doing this for your long arm hmm I might have to try that it's going to be really big right if you're including that your spool on top or anything that's on the outside because it doesn't close all the way but you want to keep that spool on there because I know some spools are on the outside the point is every sewing machine is different so you will walk with me how I did mine. And when you're cutting your strips, find them, you know, that are long enough to go across the needed areas. And, uh, but look in your stash, really go into your stash and enjoy this quilt as you go method. Now, what I will tell you, um, I did use for this one, I did use um, Dream Fusible 8020. Okay, I used a uh, craft size, which was uh, 46 by 36. I do have a little left over. And I used one yard of fabric for the lining. Now this hasn't been finished yet. We talk about that at the end, but <clears throat> inside here it's Hush Hush Stitch, I believe, <laughs> um, by Lori Holt. I do have some of that in the shop if you're interested, but I, I used a yard and I do have leftover of that too. I may use it for binding um, in the future, but so, and I did use it for the handle up here. This line is all kinds of sewing machine notions. Um, it's really darling. Even um, the side panels are were the same and there are sewing machines and, not, and whatnots, spools of thread, scissors um, for the side panels. Um, it's just super darling. It's um, measure twice. <laughs> um, and we also, I have a, I've had a fat quarter bundle and if y'all remember, I did the weave block. Um, I used that fabric. So I had plenty left over, right? So I went into my stash and yeah, mine are all the same line. And so is the other one that I'll show you later. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can literally, I mean, how cute would this be? All scrappy. Seriously, that would be darling. Absolutely darling. So I encourage you to use your scraps, grab your batting, um, the first one I did, I actually used, it was either an 80-20 or 100% cotton. And you'll see that one later, but it, it was just normal batting. It's quilt as you go, just as you all have told me you enjoy. And I wanna also mention, let me get this out of the way. I feel kind of weird sitting with it. <laughs> okay. I also wanna mention that we do have a worksheet free online. It's under the inspiration tab on our website. You can get that free. Um, it's just a worksheet. It just tells you what to measure and where to put the measurements and how much the initial cut you will do for your panels will be and how to get there. So it's just a very simple worksheet, but it's something that you can use to reference and you can make more than one. And I even give you a little tip and trick how to make one for a friend. So. I'll tell you what, guys, I think, I think, I think I've talked enough. I think it's time to get started on your sewing machine cover. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is measure our sewing machine, okay? And like I said, I did create a cheat sheet. If you're interested, you can find that on the website, but I'm just gonna write these down for now. 
And on that cheat sheet, there is a place for you to write all the measurements and what to do with them. I guess it's more of a worksheet, not a cheat sheet. <laughs> but you want to make sure when you do measure that you are measuring the widest areas and anything that may be the way you're going to put the cover on. So if you're going to keep this up and keep thread loaded, you'd want to measure it with this like that. Okay. I'm going to cover mine closed. So this is the way that I choose to measure. Now I also want to give you a little tidbit of a trick, I guess. So to be real with you guys, if um, you don't want to measure it, you can go onto Google and Google your sewing machine and find the dimensions that way, either through your manufacturer, um, different uh, places that sell sewing machines will give dimensions. Uh, I did that just to look to see whether or not um, I was pretty close. <laughs> so I know it works, <laughs> but you might, if you wanted to do a sewing machine cover for a friend, but you weren't sure how big their machine was, you could also Google their machine if you know what it is and you can make one for them as a gift. How cool is that, right? Don't even have to be there. Okay, so the length is the one I'm gonna measure first and it's going all the way across. Now you wanna make sure that your hand wheel is included and if it bevels out, you always wanna make sure that you're getting the best of the most. And I've already made one, right? So I kind of have this memorized, but it's like a, about a 17 and a quarter-ish Okay, going all the way across here. And that would include my hand wheel. And there is actually a little bevel out in the front. Then we're going to measure the height. Okay, so you would take it from the bottom. You can also use a ruler if you so choose. And again, if there was something on top, you'd want to make sure that it's going to be the measurement that you would want to utilize. Okay, and mine is actually... 12 inches. So I'm going to write the 12 and then we're going to measure the width of it. Okay. Which is across. And again, if your handle sticks out further than the bottom, mine actually doesn't. If there's something that is protruding, you'd want to make sure you're measuring the most widest part all the way across. And mine is sitting about eight inches. Okay. So at this point, okay, I'm going to take that 17 and whatever it was, 17 and a quarter. It's more like three eighths, but I'm going to round it up to 18. Okay. I'm just going to make this simple for myself. So I have 18 going across, 12 going on the height, and the width is at eight inches. That's mine. Yours will be different because every machine is different unless you have a quantum uh, Singer Stylus 9960, which is this is machine particularly. If I had the um, extension table on and I wanted the cover to cover the extension table, you'd have to leave it on and measure that. And of course, the dimensions they give you on Google won't give it to you with the extension table. So you would have to measure that if you wanted it to be included in the cover. OK, so this works for any machine and any way that you would like to cover it in the evening or whenever, right? So I've got 18 length, 12 height, eight across. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those measurements and I'm going to add two inches. Now this is a little different than um, I think you might have seen in the past, but because we're quilting as you go and because we're going to quilt these pieces, I would rather be too big and cut down than to be right and then quilt it and it shrunk too much. Okay. So I'm actually going to add two inches to all of that. So I, what I've got then, this was 18. So now I have 20 for my length. This was 12 on height. So now I have 14 on the height. And then it was eight inches going across. So now I've got 10 for the width. Okay. That tells you the size of the panels that we're going to cut which then takes me to the next step. And I want to talk about this for just a second. So because we're quilting as we go, we're actually going to make our panels, okay, with the backing included. Now my backing is Hush Stitches by Lori Holt and um, for Riley Blake Designs. Super darling. It's all about sewing, right? 
So I've actually fused, I actually took an entire yard of fabric, okay, and I fused onto um, some batting and what I ended up using for the first time ever, I've never used this before and it's backwards, Got it. I think it's backwards, <laughs> but it's Dream Fusible 8020. It's only fusible on one side. Okay, if you do tend to uh, want to use something like this, just make sure that you have the correct side when you're fusing because you don't want to fuse it to your sewing machine. Now, I just took that great big yard of fabric and I fused it onto a craft size of Dream Fusible 8020, which is measures about 46 by 36, only on one side. And I'll tell you why I did that. When you go to cut your batting, Okay, I don't know about y'all, but it makes a heck of a mess on your on your cutting mat, right? So being able to fuse that whole yard, even though it didn't take an entire yard, being able to fuse the whole yard and then put the fabric on the bottom really made cutting cleaner and more efficient, okay? But I did cut my, once I fused it all on there, we then are going to cut the panels. Okay, so the front panel, and we'll put, I'll put words underneath here, and again, it's on the worksheet, okay? So your front panels, you'll have two of them that you'll need to cut, okay? And they will measure mine, remember this was 18, I added two inches. So this is 20 inches across, okay, by 14 inches high. So you're gonna take that length, and your height plus the two inches on each side. So I got a 20 by 14 panel and you'll need two of these. Those will be the front sides, okay? Then for the side panels, okay? Again, this was 12 inches, so we're gonna go the height. So now it's 14 and the width was eight. So I have cut a 14 by 10 panel out of my fused batting with the backing, okay? That are, and you'll need two of those, all right? Then last but not least, I uh, don't, oh, here it is. <laughs> you'll want a top piece, okay? That will be on the top. So from the, the whole kit and caboodle, this top piece will measure 20 inches long or your length plus two inches and the width. So mine was eight inches, add two, that's 10. So I've got a piece here that is 20 inches long by 10 inches wide, okay? That's what this is, okay? Now we're quilting as we go, so I only wanted the one side, okay? For now at least. Now I wanna explain something. You do have an option, you can cut all your batting first and your, um, or, Yes, then you can take all your batting and put it on a yard and then sub cut them out yourself. Uh, you could cut each piece of batting and each piece of backing and then fuse them together. Um, lots of ways you can do that. I just found this way to be really easy. And if you're worried about, this is one of my leftovers, okay? And I wanted to show you this. It's temporary. I didn't add steam, which will make it more permanent, but it'll peel right off. So I'm not wasting anything. I'll simply put this in my stash and I'll put this in my stash and I'll probably end up using the leftovers from my yard um, as my binding, okay? But we'll talk about that later. I just wanted to talk about getting those pieces cut, what size they need to be, okay? And getting them fused to your backing, whether you're using a spray-based, homemade base, you could do thread basing, you can do whatever you want. You can use pins, I suppose. I, I know I'm not a pinner, so um, I, I wouldn't know how that all works when you're quilting as you go, because you, you're gonna quilt as we go and you don't wanna run into your pins, okay? So however it is that you would like to fuse those pieces, you just wanna make sure that your main bodies are length times height plus two inches to each of those measurements. The side panels are height times width plus the two inches of each of those. And the top is your length times width. And you need two of the main, two of the sides, and one top. So that's five pieces all together. Fuse them as you desire to your backing fabric. 
And then we'll move to the next step, which I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about for a second. Um, what I'm going to do with my side panels, that's a main panel, <laughs> I can tell by looking at them. I'm actually going to do a spray base and I'm gonna take an entire fat quarter, okay? I'm gonna spray based on my, onto my batting and I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna quilt it, period. I'm gonna make it really easy. I might do cross hatching. I might do straight lines. I might do wavy lines. I wanna, this is supposed to be fun and easy, but my side panels are gonna be an entire piece of fabric, okay? Very easily done. Now you don't have to do this. You can work with your scraps, just like we're gonna do with the main body and with the top. I'm gonna to show you um, an easy way to quilt as you go for this, but that's what I'm gonna do with my side panel. So I wanted to make you aware of that, okay? So the next thing that we're go I'm going to do, and um, you'll see this in the next clip more up close and personal, and, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my fabrics, of course, I'm gonna press them out, and for the top pieces, okay, I'm simply gonna cut two and a half inch strips that are the same width, so they're 10 inches, okay? That top piece is 20 by 10, so I'm gonna cut two and a half strips about 10 inches long, okay, out of my fabric, and I'll mix and match them completely. Um, and I'll probably cut, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut like, um, oh, we'll say 11. If I need another one, I'll, I'll make sure to have, I'll cut 12. That way I know I have enough because that's plenty to go 20 inches in width. So I'm gonna cut 12 of these in different fabrics, two and a half inches. Then for the main body, okay, these are 20 inches long. You could cut 20 inch strips, but that's a lot, right? So I'm gonna take the height, which was 14 on here. I'm gonna cut three inch strips. And I'm gonna cut about, I don't know if this is gonna be enough, but um, I'm gonna make sure to cut, um, eight should be plenty. So I'm gonna do eight strips per side, okay? So that's 16, because I need two of them. And um, only one top, so that number won't change. But I'm gonna do two and a half strips to the top. I'm gonna go three inch strips for the, or for the sides, both sides. And then I'm gonna show you how to quilt as we go, and then we're going to assemble our machine. So I will see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so once you have all your pieces cut with your backing and your batting, and remember we have one top panel, two main body side panels, and then I, like I said before, I did my side panels very different. I went ahead and spray starched on the top. And I think you can tell, I just basically did a cross hatch. You can do straight lines, wavy lines. You can do whatever you want to make this so simple, but this is um, the exact size I talked about. And we don't have to worry about the edges because we're gonna trim it down. That's one of the benefits of doing it this way. You can make sure things look really good. Okay, so I do have my two side panels done, okay? And then, the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the top and the two larger main bodies and you're gonna do them exactly the same. So we also have all our strips cut and I'm just gonna simply lay them out, okay? And I'm gonna overlap them, I think about a quarter of an inch and you know, at this point, I'm just looking at design. Am I gonna, is it gonna make me happy with what I'm gonna end up with? We will see. But it gives me an opportunity to switch things around as needed. And if you had, you didn't have to cut your strips down exactly the same size, you could have left them longer because we're going to trim this at the end, that would be fine. Um, I'm just always looking at, this has a little bit of waste as it is, so I'm always looking at a way to save a little bit, but man, I don't know why when I was trying to go through scraps. All right, 
because this was left over from another project. I had plenty of fat quarters left. I still have plenty left. <laughs> okay. And one more. Let me see. Let's go ahead and do this one. Now, the biggest part of this is I'm trying to make sure that I'm not going to have a weird seam at about a quarter to a half inch, okay? Because we're going to sew these together and if your seam is too close, it's going to wreak havoc. So it's nice to be able to lay out to see if this is all going to be the exact placement. If there's anything I want to switch, I could do it now and that I'm getting a good measurement at the end because I will be cutting one side or the other. I'll get to pick. Okay, so the next step, I always start in the middle and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I pick one of these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one as the center and that's where we're gonna start. So I'm just gonna pick these back up in the same order. And this side will be the left. And this side will be the right. So I'm just gonna leave that one right there in place, okay? Make sure she's nice and straight. They do stick well, so I don't feel like I needed pins when I did this. But this one will be, you're gonna leave this one facing up. The pretty side is facing you and the not so pretty is facing your batting. Cause remember we're quilting as we go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just line these up right on top of each other and bring it over to the sewing machine. And we are going to simply sew a quarter inch roughly, right? Right down the center or not down the center, but down this edge quarter inch seam. So let me pull you over and do that real quick. All right. So I know that my quarter inch is, I'm using a walking foot because there is a lot of bulk here, but I know it's somewhere by that hole that I can see. Now I'm not at a great angle because I'm trying to share a different camera angle for you because this does get kind of bulky and I don't want fabric sitting in your, camera view where you can't see a whole lot okay but <clears throat> I go ahead and put now I don't even have to back stitch at this point because we are going to be sewing the pieces together and we're going to trim off a side we're not sure which we get to pick but we get to trim it down a little bit so I'm not going to back stitch whatsoever I'm just going to go ahead and try to sew a quarter inch straightish line it doesn't even for me it doesn't even matter if it's perfect or not but I will tell you, I did leave my stitch at this point at 2.5 because I got a little bit of bulk. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut threads and we're gonna pull it over to the other camera. All right, now I will tell you that I didn't use an iron for this part. I didn't feel like it was necessary. You can certainly iron these if you so desire but I'm just basically doing a finger press. So we opened it up and we're gonna press down that seam, okay? And again, the batting really helps everything to stick. Feel free to pin if you so desire and go ahead and feel free to press your seam open if you so desire. So we've got the first two on and then you're just simply going to and the next and do the exact same thing. We're so that quarter inch and we're going to continue this on this side. Once all of that is finished for this side, then we will come back to the next side and start the same thing, sewing that quarter inch and adding on until we get to the end. So I'm going to finish this off camera. Now, 
and then I'll come back to you when it's finished. But I did want to tell you, you're going to do the exact same thing with your main body. This is much bigger. This is why I chose to use the top. It's hard for you to see the whole thing. But the main body one, you'll also put with the batting facing up and so lay out your strips and then sew them on just like this one, just like the top, okay? Everything is the same with those. It's a total of three pieces because you have two main bodies and one top panel, okay? So I'm just going to keep on adding on and I'll come back to you when I have all three of my panels done. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, I've decided to come back at you for just a second to show you something because I hate for you to be doing this and be like, this didn't work out right, what am I gonna do? Okay, so I've sewn all of these on and if you'll notice over here, I've got a little bit of batting showing. This is okay because it's not a quarter inch it's not a half an inch. It's not, it's less than an inch. I'm going to be shaving an inch off of, and obviously it'll be this end because this one's, this one's fine. So don't worry about it if it's less than an inch. Okay. It's when it gets too big, which I'm going to show you here in just a second and what my plan is. This probably happened because I didn't sew a perfect quarter inch because to be honest, the math says these should have fit perfectly. And obviously I didn't sew completely straight. <laughs> like I said, it won't matter in the end of the day. This is going to be, this is going to be just fine, but I wanted to make you aware of it because I don't want you to think you did something wrong. Okay. So the next step, we will be trimming these down. Okay. And this is why I did it a little bigger. It allows for mistakes and it also allows in case there's any shrinkage in your if you quilt it and, and it shrinks a whole bunch. So it gave you some flexibility. This is exactly why I did that this way, okay? All right, so let me show you this next step or this next situation that I have, okay? So all these are just laid out. I haven't started sewing, okay? And I think I did about a quarter inch. Now I could be off by a little because I'm, I'm not measuring. I'm just laying them out and if you will notice, I've got a metric ton over on this side, okay? So what I will do is, I don't know which strip I'm gonna use yet. <laughs> I'll figure that out in a second. But <clears throat> let's, I'm gonna go with a blue. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so if I put this down I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about this, where this, where this seam line would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over this one a little bit. All right. It's got, it's hanging off. Okay. It is hanging off a little. So we want to make sure. I got a little bit over here and I'm going to pull everything over. I don't know if I'm doing this too much, too little. We will find out. Line these all back up again. This is why I, I encourage you to lay everything out and give yourself what a rough estimate of what a quarter inch is. Doesn't have to be exact because I know I'm not going to sew exact, but you don't want to be too big or too small. You just a rough estimate. All right, so now we'll put this one down. And that's much better. I will tell you, I can feel it's hanging off a little bit, but remember we are going, sorry, I wasn't in the whole camera view. We are going to be going uh, to trim them down. So this one, I'll have to pick a side, no less. But either way, I'm going to have to trim off the fabric to be equal. But we'll talk about that when I get there and when we get there. But that is the solution. How many did I end up using? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight going across. And 
Of course, I've got a weird middle, so I'm gonna start with this one and I'll pick these up in the order of which I will sew, okay? Which, remember, we sew from in out. So this one will be on top, this one will be on top, and this one, if that's the one I choose. <laughs> I still gotta figure that one out because I have two panels, remember? So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm just simply going to leave this right here because this is where I decided was where I wanted to start to make sure that I fill up all of the necessary places, okay? So I wanted to give you a heads up because it could very well happen to you, but this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be scrappy. You can use any scraps that you would like. And this way you have something to help you gauge exactly where we're going, okay? In case that happens to you too, now you'll know what exactly to do. So let me get the pan the main body panels done and I will see you in just a sec. All of your panels should be quilted or add your strips, okay? So the next step, I am not gonna lie to you guys, it's all about trimming. Now we're gonna trim, we started out with a measurement. We built it up two inches bigger now we're going to trim it down an inch smaller. So this is my top piece and my top piece um, is 20 by 10. So now we're going to trim it down to 19 by 9. Okay. So we did talk about this. I have some overhangs. I have some, you know, stuff showing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna line this up along the batting, no matter what's going on with the rest of the quilt. I'm gonna line it up with the batting and I'm just gonna cut that extra sliver. Now I did it on this side because the other side was the one that has the boo-boo right so i'm going to trim this down to 19 inches from this side this is perfect love it okay so i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to line up on my ruler 19 inches there we go 19 inches Now I do want to try and keep things straight. Now when you quilt and you're quilting with weird pieces, you want to try and keep things really, really straight. So this is 19 inches right along here. So I'm really going to simply, there we go. Nope. Got them. We're going through a lot of fabric. So you just want to make sure that you're nice and straight. That's 19 inches right across, okay? So I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna make sure that I'm 19 inches all the way across. Now I'm working with a really small um, mat. <laughs> it's better if you do this on your large cutting mat, but if you're anything like this and you're struggling It's okay. You can make it work. Okay, so we're good. So that's 19 inches. Now, as far as across, we need 10. I mean, sorry, 9. It is at 10. We want it at 9. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> so, which side do I want to cut with? Let's look. They're both kind of wonkety wonk. Okay, so I'm first going to do a straight edge. And I prefer the back so I can see anything that's going on. That's an issue. Now this is on a small mat. So first I'm going to just make sure I have great straight edges on the 10 inch. Okay. 
for me this still is not ideal because I want to do this on my long larger cutting mat I'm not gonna lie all right so this is my straight edge I'm gonna flip her over and I'm gonna cut nine inches whoop yeah because that's my straight edge okay Now, you can notice up here, I'm, I'm lining it up on a line. I prefer to line it up on a eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch so I can really see how straight I am. And do not get me wrong, at the bottom, you can't see the bottom, but there is... Um, some straightness that I'm working on at the bottom also. Okay. Once I'm at nine inches, if anything goes, I know, I think you can see that right here. It's a little bit, um, Nope, not right there. Right here. It's a little... Oh, you can't see that. Okay, let me pull it up. I'm going to pull this up. I'm sorry about the light. We want nine inches, right? Okay. Okay. So I have it, whoop, just moved it again. Darn it. Okay. So I have this, uh, I keep doing that. Okay, so I have this ni uh, nice, even, even straight line up on top. You can't see it, but I have a nice, even line on the bottom. And it starts off as nine inches, and then it starts to wane. Like right here, it's a little bit bigger. That's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm first going to just cut to the 9 inch. Okay. I have to push it up because my cutting mat's not big enough. Again, this is not ideal. But... It isn't necessary when you don't have a big enough area. Okay, so this is scrap, okay? I'm gonna flip it around and this should be starting at square. Now, remember I said it got a little wonky, so when I flipped it around, I've got a little extra showing, but at the bottom, it's really, really straight. I'm looking up on top. I'm looking on the side. And I'm just going to simply trim it down to nine inches. Bear with me, because I'm going to use it. <laughs> Y'all know me, I'm a little slow at cutting. And I guess I did not cut that completely straight the first time. All right. <clears throat> We're going through a lot of layers. Just make sure before you move your ruler that you go through all the layers, okay? All right. I'm going to push it up. I'm going to do it again.
I know you can't see all of it and I apologize for that, but the end result that you should have is a nine by 19. Originally, this piece in particular, the top piece, we measured my machine at eight by 18 length. I'm giving myself an extra length of an inch both directions because I'm going to be sewing a quarter inch along the whole thing. So that gives it the necessary dimensions, okay, that need to happen so that I have a straight edge that measures an inch bigger than my machine, okay? So that's the first one. Now I want to talk to you about this particular one of my main body. And remember I had to move everything. When I did it, I still got a little bit of a extra. So I'm going to cut from here because this one, it actually hangs off a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm first going to flip it over to the back. Yep. I'm going to turn my cutting mat to make sure it's long enough. And it's still, okay, let's try it again. <laughs> oh. And I actually want to do it this way because, there we go. I want to cut off this extra fabric first. It's not a lot on this side. I'm going to line up along the batting and give it a cut. So this should be good. Now, I ha oh, yep, that should be good. All right. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. This time, this is 20 inches. I'm going to mark it down to 19. And I want to say this is 14 inches. Yep, it's 14 inches, so I'm going to want to cut it down to 13. Now, I know you y'all can't see that, so there we go. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact, exact same thing that I did with the top one, but I'm going to make this an inch smaller on two sides. So I'm cutting it down to 19 inches across by 13 inches deep, okay? That way, everything is going to match. So I'm going to get all the cutting down an inch on two adjacent sides, okay? So we're going to cut the length by one inch and the height by one inch less. And that will enable us to sew these things together so it'll still fit our sewing machine. So I will see you guys in just a sec. Once you have all your pieces cut to the size that is necessary, so it's one inch bigger, um, of all your sides, all your pieces that you measured were now at one inch and not two inch because we trimmed those down, right? So the next step is that we're gonna work with the two side panels and our two large panels, okay? Now, if you notice on one of my pieces here, I could re-glue to get this to stick better, but I'm just gonna pay real close attention that I don't flip by accident this, this piece, okay? Uh, you want to make sure on all your edges uh, that that is the truth. <laughs> Ask me how I know. The first one I did was not as easy uh, because I had to back out stitches because just like this one, see the pieces is not fused. Well, we didn't fuse any of these pieces, so you definitely want to make sure that it is staying nice and flat. This one's this one's fine as far as the back goes, but your top pieces, that extra piece is not fused down because we quilted as I, we went. So just make sure they are good to go. So I wanna also mention that 
my particular prints are not directional, okay, per se. But I did notice that I have, on both of these side panels, I do have two green um, sewing machines in the same direction. And although this blue one really pops out at me, I originally thought I was going to make this my up. It made it look funny with the two green. So it's not really directional, but it's a design choice. Whatever your choice is, just make sure that you keep everything in the same direction that you want it to go, okay? Whatever it is. Maybe you want, you know, a certain look or, or something, um, and, and you just want to pay attention that they're all facing the direction that you want to sew. The next step is we're going to start sewing these together, and the first thing we're going to do is sew all these panels together. So you're going to take, and you're basically going to sew a small to a large, and then a small to this to this large, and then we're going to add on the last one. So at the end of the day, you're going to have small, large, small, large, and a straight line, okay? Remember, we don't have to make this hard. We want to make this fun and easy. So taking my first small panel, I'm going to flip her over so they're right sides together with one of my large panels, okay? And you can pin, you can clip, you can do neither, whatever you're most comfortable with. This is a straight line sew, so it's not anything crazy. Remember that you want to make sure that all your fabric is in the correct place and it hasn't flipped. That is probably the biggest tip I can give right now because there's nothing worse than pulling out stitches with jack so i'm just going to use some wonder clips for this because just like i said this part is is not hard you're just going to sew these two together with a quarter inch seam as best as you can keeping that nice and straight that's your biggest your biggest thing okay and add that quarter inch seam and then when these two are added i'm going to take the small panel and i'm going to add it onto this side so my quarter inch seam and then once I have this on, I will right sides together with that small panel and sew on my last large panel, sewing that quarter inch seam. So I'm going to do that part off camera. I am going to show you some sewing on camera because it, it, it's bulky, right? So I will come back eventually with some sewing that you can watch, but I think this is pretty self-explanatory. We're just making one long line of all our fabric sewn together small, large, small, large, okay? So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll go to the next step. I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so I do have small to large and then I added another small and the last large panel, okay? So they're all stitched together in one great big line. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the two ends right sides together, okay, plain and simple. And I will tell you, you can clip them, you can pin them. You, like I said before, it's the same process. I actually found it easier not to pin or clip, but I did wanna give you that option. So then we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, okay. So here we are, I'm, I'm just lining everything up nice and pretty. I want it to be as straight as possible. This is actually kind of forgiving. Um, so I don't stress about it too much. Just so you know, this again, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to, way, a, supposed to be a way to use your scraps and have a good time doing it and something that will make your sewing machine much more um, appeasing when you put it away. Now I do have a little problem with my thread here. It's not long enough. I will also say, like I said in the words earlier, I am doing a back stitch at the beginning and at the end, which is another reason <laughs> that makes it hard to rip if you don't get this done correctly. So both of them are lined up nice and pretty and I will adjust as I go. But I also want to mention, I do have a seam guide here. And normally, um, when it's this much bulk, I actually use a different 
um, seam guide. I usually use the ideal seam guide. Um, it has this little slit so you could put it back here, but I decided to go ahead and try it with this just because I know a number of you have one of these and I want you to see that it is very possible. But the other thing, um, if you do pin, you have to pin backwards because the pins won't go over this when they will go over this particular, the guidelines um, for quilting seam guide. They do allow the pins go over and you will see that later. Um, so we're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my needle and I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of stitches and I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch to secure it. And I, you will notice again, I am using a walking foot and that's because there's so much bulk, okay? And I will tell you, I did increase my stitch length to three because of all the bulk. So we're just gonna try and keep everything straight as we go along. And I don't know, I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Maybe I should do a video on this where you can actually see it. But I use my elbow to help with drag, okay? Um, Cause I don't want it to drag a whole bunch or to not so straight. So my arm rests, it's, it's, it's a method of madness. And if you have anything in the background that will hit against your sewing project, that again is something you'll need to be cognitive of and make sure that it doesn't stop it from moving in the correct way, okay? So normally I'm not sitting like this, but I want you all to be able to see as much as possible. I know you're not seeing my needle, but I wanted you to see the full picture of exactly what it is that I'm doing. And really guys, there's no reason to make this hard. We get down to the end and we go ahead and back stitch. and cut threads. I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so what you should have is one big circle of fabric, okay? This is kind of a cool thing. <laughs> there it is. One, all of them are stitched together and they're making like this, you know, square thing that's starting to resemble a sewing machine cover, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, if you want, I'm gonna set this aside for a second. If you wanna make a handle, I have taken a four by nine strip. I, sew, or I pressed a quarter inch going in. I then pressed it in half, okay? And then I brought each end into the half, just like so. And then I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch down this side and a quarter inch down the other for decorative purposes. The first one is to hold it together, but that way all your raw edges don't, um, they're not showing and they won't unravel. So I'm gonna take this to a sewing machine. Okay, make sure everything's nice and flat and pretty because that's what we do. If it's not perfect, I'm okay with that but I will do a back stitch again. So I'm gonna sew a few stitches, back, back stitch a few, and just try to hold this nice and straight and pretty. Now the bottom, because I opened it back up, I have to manipulate a little bit. So when I get a little closer, I'll do that. All right, now I'm on the table. So it can help here a little bit. Very simple. And whoop, I wanted to back stitch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back stitch it. And instead of breaking threads right now, I'm just gonna simply spin it around. 
and do another one. Now this one's just decorative purposes. And so I don't need to backstitch per se. It is helpful if you do though. So I'll do it at the end here. Ooh, I got a little crooked. Go ahead and cut threads. Okay, so here she is, all ready to go as a nice little handle. Now you get to pick the side that you want. I'm gonna use this one. It doesn't really matter, but we need to put it on here. Now I will tell you honestly, on my first one, I just eyeballed it and it's not quite center, but it's not noticeable. But I thought I'd give you just a little bit of help if it's something that you want to do. You're first gonna take your top piece, your top panel, and fold it uh, wrong sides together and just simply, you know, about center, put your pin and that will let you know where your center is. Open her back up, okay? Now we know that this is nine and a half inches, or excuse me, nine inches wide on mine. Half of that is 40, uh, four and a half inches. So I'm gonna line the four and a half inch up on the bottom along the edge and I'm going to line up uh, four inches on my pin what I said was the center okay and I'm taking my disappearing ink pen and I'm just going to mark um, three inches out ish so that would be one on this side four five six seven I lined it up on the four because I also know that my strip is uh, about eight and a half inches and I didn't want to do craziness with math. So I'm just giving myself one, two, three, a little, a little mark just so I know where center is. Okay. Then I'm simply going to take my handle here and fold it in half, give myself a press mark, put it right with the pin that I have in place. And then I'm going to try and eyeball, yep, I'm eyeballing the center of my handle along that little hash mark that I made. It's right here, so I'm just trying to place it in half. Now I could pin it at this point, but to be honest with you, I'm just gonna simply take it to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna do a straight stitch down and a straight stitch back and be done, okay? Okay, so we come in here, whoop. Gotta get a little closer without hitting the camera, right? And I'm gonna do about a quarter inch. Now I can still see my line, so I know that I'm about a quarter inch in and I'm just going to lower, or I'm still in the center of that strip. Just going to lower it down. I'm going to go ahead and keep it straight. Just do it as best as I can. Go back and straight on the same stitch. And go again. And cut threads all right and then I'll flip it around and do the same thing so where is the mark here it is I'm going to go about in the center here nothing crazy doesn't have to be exact I'm going to lower my needle and do a straight stitch down. I do go one past the actual strip that I'm adding. I'm going one needle past, okay? Whoop, I just went two, but that's okay. I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, just went three. Okay, it'll be fine. It won't matter a bit. It'll just I'm adding some security. It doesn't need a lot because we're not actually pulling on it. 
and I'll cut threads. All right, so let me pull this back under the camera for you. Here we go. I'm gonna snip some threads and my handle, pull that pin out, is attached and ready to be decorative. Isn't she cute? Super cute. Okay, now the next part, and it gets a little, this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. And remember that you do not have to be so persnickety, okay? It's pretty forgiving, but we're going to now attach our topper to our panels. All right, so let me get the cameras all ready to go and then I will show you exactly where we're gonna go from here. Okay, like I said, this is probably the hardest part of the whole thing and it's because there's all this bulk. All right, so I'm gonna start with my long end, okay? And what's what I wanna point out first, remember I said I had two, um, green sewing machines that needed to be upright. So I wanna make sure they're facing the correct direction when I go to flip this inside out, okay? So I know that I want this sewing machine to be towards the top, okay? We are gonna put them right sides together. However, when you line this up to begin, when you're starting this out, okay? You want to make sure that you've got a quarter inch extra along each end, okay? That's where you're going to start, all right? Now, I'm actually going to pin. I am not going to lie to you guys. We're going to get this situated. And I'm using thicker pins. I'm sure you could clip this. I'm sure that would be fine, too. I'm just, uh, I prefer pins more than I prefer clips at times, and this is one of them. But I want to, well, this is a doll needle. Okay, so we just want to get them all pinned together. All right. Make sure it's at a quarter inch beyond. Ish. I don't have to be precise per se, I'm just eyeballing it, but we are going to do our absolute best here. Now I only have four pins available to me that are bigger. Okay, so I'm actually going to use a, a skinnier one. And when you do that, when you use a skinnier one, your pins tend to bend but this one's working out good. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna start sewing this together, okay? Now again, you wanna make sure that everything is not flipped, everything looks good. And we're gonna start at the um, seam from the long side, okay? I'm gonna start on this side in the seam as best as possible and sew a quarter inch along up until the next seam, okay? And I'm gonna stop at that seam. And then I'm gonna tell you when I'm at the sewing machine together with you a couple of choices that you do have to make this as easy as possible. So let me bring you in and let's get this sewn together. Okay, I'm bringing her in here. I'm making sure my thread is available and I'm going to lift up my presser fit a little bit. Now, as you can see, my pin goes over this seam guide very nicely, which for me is a bonus. Now, whenever you're doing this, you want to make sure there's nothing underneath the machine that can get caught. That would not be good. And you want to make sure everything is flat. Now, I do know I'm about a quarter inch in and I'm trying to line up the seam with my needle, okay? As best as possible. Trust me, I was not perfect the first time and I'm probably not gonna be perfect this time, okay? You can look on the outside, you can look on the inside. I used my hand wheel to lower the needle 
I'm going to lift this back up to make sure everything is flat. And I'm just going to stitch a couple of stitches. Now there's a lot of bulk here. I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this first needle out. Put it in my handy dandy magnetic cup. Love this thing. So it'll be ready for the next one. I'm going to make sure everything is straight. This is, this is the easiest stitch of the whole top. <laughs> it's the first one because everything is not in your way. And this is exactly why I chose the camera angle that I did through this video because I wanted you to be able to see some of this at a whole different angle. Now notice that pin is gliding really nicely over that seam guide. Love that feature. When I get close, I just simply pull this out, pull that pin out and put it in my cup. <clears throat> now, as we go, you have to rearrange and resituate as you go. Take your time. This is not a race, guys. And again, I am using my elbow. <laughs> Just so you know, to help with this, to keep it from dragging. All right. All right, we're gonna pull a little bit more. I need to get a little closer. I hope I'm not in the camera with my hair or something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead. Ooh, that got a little close, so. I'm gonna have to lift my presser foot and pull this out. Gotta love it. All right, there we go. Put it in the cup. As best as we can, we keep everything straight. Oop, that one's getting a little off canter. I can see it. So I'm gonna guide my fabric to go back into, you, you can do this. Perseverance. Okay, now you can see I'm starting to get a little cricket again. So I'm gonna resituate. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull this needle out or pin. I keep calling it a needle. Okay, we did it again. We got a little bit crooked. Not a big deal. Just fix as we go. And if you'll notice, I do have my hand inside because I feel like I have a little bit more control when I'm situating. And we're gonna go, like I said, up until that seam. Whatever your seam may be, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out, keeping it straight. And once I get to that seam, I'm going to stop. I think I'm at the seam. Okay, so at this point, you can do a backstitch if you like. You can actually backstitch and then cut threads and reposition everything and repin everything. Or, just making sure I'm in that seam. I think I have one more stitch. There we go, oh yeah, there it went. Okay, so, or instead of cutting threads, you can simply lift your presser foot and turn it. Well, you gotta turn the top, okay? This short side is going to go to the short side. And this is why I said it gets a little funny it gets a little more difficult because there is so much bulk, guys. All right. And this time, when we line this up, you want it, first of all, I'm gonna make sure here in just a second because I can feel a little something going on down there. First of all, you're gonna wanna make sure you're straight. Second of all, when you line up, remember, we're going a little bit like more than a quarter inch beyond, right? So you wanna make sure that that is happening when you stretch the fabric across time. All right, now let me get this all straight. And if you'll notice, I'm not quite 
lined up on the guideline, that's okay because I'm going to I'm going to make my fabric work with me. I'm going to lower the presser foot and I'm going to just stitch a little, reline everything up. Like I said, this is honestly, guys, this is the hardest part, but it's not impossible. So I'm first going to that that little piece of fabric doesn't want to go straight. There we go. Now we're straight ish. All right. I need to lift this up. All right. Line it up again. There we go. What is going on underneath? There we are. Okay. Now again, I am putting my hand underneath because I can feel everything when I my hands inside instead of being up on top. Now you could do it up on top. Oop, got a little cray cray. There we go. Like I said, this is the hardest part. There we go. Perfect. All right, and I'm getting close to this seam and it's still over about a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna keep on going here. And when I get to that seam, I'm going to stop and pivot. I think I have one more, there it goes. Okay, very good. So at this point, I'm lifting my presser foot so I have some maneuverability. I'm gonna turn now the top piece so that it's nice and straight. Now I can notice that I have a little bit of extra on the top, but that's okay. I'm gonna put my hand underneath inside and really work this out, okay? Honestly, guys, it's, it's the diff most difficult piece or part to do, but it's still not hard. Okay, all right, now, when I go to do this, whoop, got all kinds of stuff going on. I'm just gonna check the edge real quick. You can't see that, but remember, it's gotta go beyond a quarter inch or about a quarter inch over, and it is. So now I'm just going to line everything up. I got my hand inside because I just I personally just feel like it's easier to have it inside there and be able to work from the inside now you want to if you do that you want to make sure that your fingers aren't anywhere near the needle because that will hurt okay we are sewing along And like I said, you don't have to go corner to corner and you don't have to um, turn like I'm doing. You can actually cut threads at that point and reposition everything on the, you know, beyond that, um, you know, away from the sewing machine if that makes things easier for you. But I just feel like this is not it's, it's not easy per se, as far as like all the bulk and all the extra stuff you got going on, but it's not hard to do. Okay. This is side three guys. Whoop. And I'm getting crooked. Here we go. And once we get this side done, then we got the last one. We only have one more. And then 
our sewing machine cover is all done but the finishing which I'm going to talk about now I don't know if you can see it but right here is my seam and I'm literally about a quarter inch over on the top piece here which is perfect Oop, got a little crazy there we go like I said there this isn't there it's very 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 forgiving so I'm just going to go let me pull this around a little bit to the seam line I think that's it nope one more there we go okay so now I'm at the seam line now if you'll notice I think I sewed this a little bit short over here it'll be hidden don't you worry uh, maybe one more there we go so I'm gonna again this is the last piece which is probably the worst not gonna lie to you because we've got just barely any room to work just want to get it get it started now notice see I've got a little bit of a gap I'm going to manipulate my fabric period probably could have gone a little less all right there we go now we're gonna make everything nice and straight and pretty get it all over here all right whoop lower that presser foot yep my machine yelled at me again it's okay <laughs> it's telling me you're doing something wrong lady all right I need to look yep keep this nice and straight I need to come down a little bit not on the back but on the front all right perfect yes all right and as we get closer i'm maneuvering it so that underneath is going to stay nice and flat once i get to the end there whoop, i might have a bubble we'll find out do a little back stitch do a little front stitch sorry about my hand cut threads let's pull it out and see how we did okay this doesn't look like a whole lunch, bunch of nothing to you being up so close and personal but my corners look pretty good the best way to tell is to turn it outside or inside goes to the inside okay so I'm gonna cut the film here and bring you so you can see my face and we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about the rest of this craziness and get this ready to be finished so I'll see you guys in just a sec <laughs> okay i brought my sewing machine over here because we're going to open this up and that's how we're going to know how we did all right so i'm glad i'm doing it here and not like underneath that tiny camera i am so ready for this sewing machine cover now i will tell you once you get it all out if you are really you know if it brings you any kind of anxiety make sure my microphone is not going nuts on you um that the points need to be pushed out grab your purple thing chopstick as one of our followers has so graciously stated is a great tool your hemostat or a cuticle tip and you can sit and push all those corners out now notice i did not trim the bulk out of the corners i'm just not concerned about it guys 
this is a fun, easy project. And there she is. Now I want to tell you, okay, a couple of things. <laughs> I wanted, and I should have paid more attention, but it's all good. See how my two pinks line up? I wanted this pink over here and these buttons over there, but it's all good. It's all going to be okay. But this is also another reason, besides the fact that two and a half inch strips really fit nicely on my 20 inches, um, besides that, um, being that these are two and a half and these ones in the front are three, the lines, you're never going to get them to match. I didn't want to have to worry about matching seams, especially since I was trimming them down and trying to make sure that things were covered and that we don't have any batting showing. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Now I'm going to put it on the sewing machine right here. This is, this is the test of all times, right? I brought her over. Yep. If you notice, I have two, this one doesn't work. It's the one that was struck by lightning, <laughs> but look guys, look how Super darling, she is. Isn't that just so cute? Super cute, gotta love this. Let's just look. Yeah. You know, when you make stuff sometimes, do you ever go, I made that? Yeah, I did, that's me. Yep, this is one of those moments. <laughs> She's pretty. She dresses up this sewing machine very nicely. Got a nice little handle if I so wanted one. It does help you take it off, but look, it's not necessary if you don't want to do that. Now, let's talk about, for a second, let's talk about finishing. And what do I mean by that? Well, remember, we have open edges, okay? So, you have a couple of options. I'm sure there's more than a couple. But the two that come to mind, you can either fold them in and then stitch them, stitch it down so that stays closed, or... Let me show you the next one here. Put this one over here. Okay. Yeah, this one's really my favorite. Okay. So on this one, I did a binding. Very simple binding. And it doesn't take much. It's a quarter of a yard. And you really only need two strips. Um, I th well, really, it just depends on your sewing machine, if, if we're going to be real. Um, two to three, uh, I can't imagine it'll take you more than three strips, but you can do a binding. I mean, how super cute is that, guys? Super cute, right? Yes. Now, if you're wondering, Angel, and I did this the same way. If you're wondering, Angel, how did you do that one? Because it's very different. It looks different than the other one, right? Because I've got quilt blocks in here. So I've got a log cabin on this side and I've got a drunkard's path on this side. So let me tell you about this. Those are orphan blocks that I happen to have. And they were 10 and a half inches. Um, pulling off threads. <laughs> they were 10 and a half inches um, unfinished. So they're about 10 inches finished. And if you're wondering, I did do it, I put it together really the same way. I did quilt as you go. So I have the strips on top. Now what's really cool about this one is I used again, all the same fabric, every piece of fabric in here, minus this background, including on this side. Okay. And this is, this is a, the same background, but this is still the same fabric line. This is flea market by Lori Holt of Riley Blake or for Riley Blake designs all of it and then the background in the blocks is actually cross stitch brown um, also from Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet for Riley Blake so um, it's the same line and it was extra fabric that I had that I wanted something to do with it's the same concept now if you're wondering you know a little bit more detail I will definitely walk you through it today at 3 p.m. Eastern time as we'll do the live quilting and answers, live Q&A session. So hope to see you there, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, we will be here. So those two options, you can do a cute little binding. Oh, the binding is not Lori Holt. <laughs> this is a diagonal red. Um, I do have some of the diagonal in the shop and we have some cross stitch. We do have cross stitch brown in the shop. Flea market's gone. There are no more flea markets, so can't find that. But there are other Lori Holt fabrics that you could definitely use. Um, if it, it, but the whole point is, is trying to find those things that 
are scrappy that are in your um, in your sewing room and you're wondering what to do and you're just sitting on it, here's an option, okay? This sewing machine cover is really able to use super scrappy. And if you don't have an orphan block and you just wanna do strips, it's this easy, guys. It really is. And it's super fun and it's super cute. And yeah, so fold them in under and stitching is one way to finish. The other is binding it. It's totally up to you. But yeah, that's all I got for today, guys. So I hope to see you today at 3 p.m. for our live Q&A, uh, Eastern time, 3 p.m. because I'm here in Virginia. But in the meantime, we do have the sheet that I've talked about. Um, it's just the worksheet to um, put your numbers on and understand how to get the two inches and what your blocks should initially be cut down to or cut up. Your, your panels should be originally cut to uh, before you start trimming down again. So yeah, that is what I got. I hope you enjoyed this. Grab your freebie, it's on our website under the inspirations tab. The link for that is down below in the description box. I'll put the address up here um, in words. So for those of you watching on TV, you can write that down and grab yours um, when you go online. It is completely free. So don't forget to grab that. Hope to see you at 3 p.m. Thank you all for stopping by. And until next time, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful. Never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting. See y'all soon.